In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, your fellow redeemed by the blood of Christ. Is God really here? Is he really present? Is he really with us? Well, you know the passages. You know how God said through Isaiah the prophet, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. You know how Jesus, before he ascended into heaven, said, And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. You know this familiar 23rd Psalm. A psalm that talks about your good shepherd and says about him, You are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Yes, you know those promises and can even recite them by memory. And yet, are there times in your life that you lose sight of those promises? Times that you doubt those promises? Times that you wonder if those promises can even be true? I'm sure there are. And so is God here? Is he really with us? Is he really present? I think all of us have asked those questions at some point as we lived in this sinful world, especially when we're facing hardships. For think about what we see with our eyes. We don't see a big shining light of the glory of God. We don't see a man with a long white beard, with a rod and a staff saying, come, follow me this way to heaven. We don't see those things with our physical eyes. Instead, what do we see with our physical eyes as we dwell in this sinful world? Oftentimes we see sin and all its effects. We see sin and its effects in our country, in our homes, and even in our very own lives. For look at this country. Not only have many people in this country been infected with the disease COVID-19 and been hospitalized and died, not only has there been economic downturn in our country because of this disease, but on top of that, have you noticed how this disease has caused angers and divisions and arguments in this country. You've all seen politicians yelling at one another, telling each other that they're not doing their job. You've seen protests on the street, some saying, open up now, others saying, let's remain closed through the summer. You've probably read articles online or on the internet saying, so-and-so is doing a bad job, or so-and-so over here isn't helping at all. You've probably noticed all those things. And since that strife is in our country right now, is God really here? Or think of what's happening in your homes. Not only do people in your family get infected with sickness and disease, whether it's COVID-19 or something else, not only are people in your family affected by this economic downturn, but on top of that, Even with your family, with those who live in the same house that you do, with those you love the most, have you gotten into spats or arguments with them as you've been quarantined together? That's probably especially true if you have more than one kid living under the same roof. They get on each other's nerves at times. And if that's what's happening in your homes, if there are arguments and spats even in your homes, well, then is God really present there? Or think about your life. Not only do you keep doing the evil you do not want to do as opposed to the good you want to do. Not only do you have fears and doubts and worries and stresses and anxieties jumbling around in your brain. But on top of that, just think of all the evil thoughts that are on your mind. Thoughts that you would be ashamed if anybody else found out about. Thoughts that you just can't seem to get rid of. And if that's what's happening in your life day after day, is God really with you? 
Yes, it's very easy to doubt whether or not our God is here, present, and with us. For we know what our Savior Jesus Christ did when he took on human flesh. We know how he destroyed our enemies of sin, death, and the devil by his death and resurrection. We know how he conquered all those enemies and took all of their powers away. And if that is what has happened, if Christ has conquered our enemies by his death and resurrection and taken all their powers away... Well, then when strife and discord and arguments and stresses and anxieties and everything else comes into our country or into our homes or into our lives, well, that must mean our God isn't present, right? Because if our God was present, he would have removed all those things from us. And so is God really here? Is he really present? Is he really with us? When those doubts and fears arise in your mind, and, and it will from time to time, especially as you dwell in this sinful world and face all the hardships in this world, when those questions arise, there's only one place where you can go to find a sure and certain answer. And it is not your feelings or your emotions or how blessed you perceive your life to be at that particular moment. You see, that's the mistake that many people make. They base God's presence based on how they feel or what emotions they have or all the blessings they're experiencing at that particular moment. And that's wrong. For those things change constantly. They aren't reliable. And so you cannot look to those things to understand whether or not God is really present. He's present because I feel him. No, that is wrong. Instead, the only place where you can to find out if God is really present it's to his holy word. For as we heard last week, through the word, Christ speaks to you. Through the word, Christ reveals himself to you. Through the word, Christ comes into your heart and sets up his kingdom inside of your heart so that he can rule over your life. That all happens through the word. And so while there are plenty of places that we could go in God's word that would assure us when and where our God really is present, one of the best places that we could go to see the presence of God, well, it's this familiar 23rd Psalm. A Psalm that talks about our God being our good shepherd. For look at that 23rd Psalm. Did you notice there aren't any questions in it? There aren't maybes or wishes or hopes. I hope this is what my good shepherd does when he comes. No. Instead, everything in that psalm is a statement of fact. Telling us exactly what our good shepherd does whenever he is present with us, leaving us no doubt about when he is present. For look at what our good shepherd does when he comes into our lives. King David says, he causes you to lie down in green pastures and leads you beside quiet waters. Jesus, your good shepherd, does this by feeding you with himself through word and sacrament and causing you to drink on him the waters of life. For just as sheep need to feed on green grass and drink waters in order to strengthen and nourish their body, so also we need to feed on the rich green pastures of his word. And we need to drink the quiet waters of Christ if our faith is going to be strengthened and nourished. In fact, that's why your good shepherd brought you here in this virtual way this morning. He brought you here. So that through the word that is being proclaimed throughout this service, your good shepherd can come to you and feed you and strengthen you and nourish you. In addition, your good shepherd Jesus restores your soul and guides you in paths of righteousness for his namesake. He does this by using the rich green pastures of his word to drive you to repentance over your sins. And when Jesus, your good shepherd, drives you to repentance over your sins, well, then he restores you by washing you clean in the blood he shed for you as he gave up your, his life for you, removing all sin from you, restoring you to who you should be. In fact, this forgiveness that comes through repentance 
It even allows you to stay on that path of righteousness by remaining faithful to God and by abounding in good works. That's what happens when your good shepherd Jesus is present, for without him you would immediately fall off the path and go astray. In addition, your good shepherd Jesus causes you to, quote, fear no evil, not even if that evil is death itself. And this has probably really been noticeable for you over the past couple of months during this whole ordeal. You're different than many people in this world because you do not fear evil, whatever that evil is. For why should you fear evil? Your good shepherd, Jesus Christ, has already destroyed all evil by his death and resurrection. And more than that, he has given you the victory over all evil by coming to you through the waters of holy baptism. For it was at your baptism that he ripped you out of the grasp of your enemy and brought you into his flock and made you one of his sheep, one of his dear children. And since you are a sheep in the flock of your good shepherd Jesus, you do not fear evil. Your good shepherd has so firmly defeated evil that he can even make a table for you in the presence of your enemies. And your enemies can't do anything about it. They can't touch you. They can't harm you. Not if your good shepherd Jesus is present there. And finally, your good shepherd Jesus, whenever he comes to you, he saves the best for last. For since goodness and mercy will pursue you wherever you go in this life, because wherever you go in this life, your good shepherd will be right there, giving you blessing upon blessing upon blessing. Even at the end of your life, Maybe even especially at the end of your life, your good shepherd will be right by your side, protecting you from all harm and danger, so that when your body and soul separate, he will be right there carrying your soul into heaven, where you can live in the house of the Lord forever, as the famous 23rd Psalm ends, never again doubting the presence of your God. Yes, your good shepherd Jesus does all those things when he is present. It is not a list of maybes. It is not a list of wishes and hope. It's not a list of questions. But these are all statement of facts. They're certain. Whenever your good shepherd Jesus is present, he is feeding you with his word. And he is protecting you from all evil in this world. And he is leading you to your dwelling place in heaven, in his flock forever and ever. He is doing those things every time he is present in your life. And therefore, you don't have to rely on your feelings or on your emotions or on whether you're having a good day or a bad day to know if God is with you. No. Instead, all you have to do is look to these promises of your good shepherd and see everything your good shepherd is doing for you day after day after day in good times and in bad. For just think about how your good shepherd Jesus has done all these things for you over the past two months during this entire ordeal. Has he continued to feed you with the rich green pastures of his word? Well, yes. Even though many of you haven't stepped into this church building in two months, here he is feeding you through the internet or over the Zoom, speaking the word to you so that he can strengthen and nourish your faith. And has your good shepherd continued to protect you from all evil in this world? Of course he has. For not only, at least to my knowledge, have none of you been hospitalized for COVID-19, but more than that, you have food in your belly, clothes in your back, and a roof over your head. And even greater than that, you still belong to him. Despite the fact that Satan is trying to use this whole ordeal to launch a constant barrage of attacks against you, all to bring you back under his control, that has not happened. Because your good shepherd has been with you, protecting you from his attacks, so that you can remain a sheep in his flock. And finally, is your good shepherd still leading you down that path that leads to your dwelling place in heaven? Of course he is. This is why none of you are afraid of death. 
Even if death is near for you or a loved one, you are not afraid of death because you know your good shepherd Jesus has conquered death and taken away all its power by his resurrection from the grave. And therefore, death for you is just the way that you go to live in the house of the Lord forever. You're certain of all those truths, aren't you? Certain that your good shepherd has done those things for you over the past two months and will continue to do them for you in the future as well. And therefore, you don't have to worry or doubt of whether or not your God is here or present or with you. You don't base that on your emotions or feelings or or on how idyllic your life seems to be at that particular moment. Instead, you base those things on God's promises. His promise that he is always feeding you with his word. His promise that he will always protect you from harm and danger. His promise that he is still leading you to your eternal home in heaven. And as long as your good shepherd Jesus continues to fulfill those promises, which he will for his sheep until the end of time, as long as he continues to fulfill those promises, well, then it really doesn't matter what's going on in our country or in our homes or in our life. It doesn't matter how good or bad we feel our life is at any particular moment. We can still be certain, always be certain of this one truth, that our God, our good shepherd, will be there. He will always be present. And he will always be with us, both now and for all eternity. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue by singing our next hymn, hymn 374.